Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. There are many ways you can go from Blender to Octane standalone, but I'll be focusing on Orbix. The first thing is you need to make sure that you are in Octane Engine and you should be in rendered view just to make sure that your server is running correctly. If your Octane server is not running correctly, then it's not going to export correctly. And you can also go up here and press Window, Toggle System Console. And then if you have any issues, you can find them here. So the first way is going to File, Export, and then going down to Octane Orbix. And I will just save this on my desktop. And I will call this Octane Scene. And that Orbix file will be these, this entire scene. So in Octane Standalone, if I right click, go to Import, and then I go find our Octane Scene. Double click on this. If I double click on this node, it will open up this graph. If I click on Render Target, it will automatically start rendering our scene. And it looks close. The first thing you might notice is that the camera doesn't look right. If you press this target, it will recenter the viewport. And then if you hold down control and mouse out, then it will bring the camera back out. I can press the target again and do this. You can also just change the resolution to match your viewport, but I'm not going to do that because I want to make sure that my camera settings, my resolution settings are the same as they were in Blender. So the resolution settings are the same. If I click on the camera, the, ca the camera settings should be the same. And if I click on this, you can see it actually changes the resolution from our camera. So I'm going to control Z. And if you accidentally move your camera, you can always push this button right here, which will reset the camera to its initial position. So now we can evaluate it between Octane and Blender. So file export Octane Orbix is one way. It doesn't always work. And if it fails, it will default to Alembic, which is not always what you want. So I'm going to show you the second way, which is my preferred way. If you go to the camera tab, make sure you're in Octane and you scroll to the bottom, you can see show Octane viewport and show Octane node graph. If I'm not rendering and I click on node graph, then you might see some things, but if I'm rendering and I do show Octane node graph, I will see our whole scene here. And if you start using Octane standalone, this actually becomes really powerful because you can see what's going on in your scene from a glance and it's really helpful. There's a lot of great things about using this node graph. Let's say I only wanna export this plane, or I wanna export just these meshes, or just the geometry. I can just select the things I want to export, and then go right click, save, and then I can save them as a package. Likewise, I can actually save this whole thing, but do control A, right click, save, and I can save the entire scene. But for now, let's just take the geometry, and we'll do right click, save, and we'll call this geo. And now if I go right click, import, find our geo, you can see we have our geometry. Now, if you wanna add this to your scene, see right now I can't add it to my scene because there's nothing coming out of it. To do that, what you would do is you would come in here and you need to get an out node. So if I right click and I go under here, you can see output. These are the, all the different types of outputs you can have. So for geometry, I need a geometry out. And now if I click this into here and I go back to my scene, you can see now I have a geo output and I'm going to plug in our geometry. And now we have just the geometry from that scene. Instead of bringing in the whole scene, we just brought in the geometry and you can see the materials were brought in correctly. This is the metal cube and that one is diffuse. So hopefully you can get a sense of how using Octane for Blender and Octane Standalone can be a really powerful pipeline. This also works the other way. Let's say we have something in Octane Standalone that we wanna bring back into Octane for Blender. I can export the whole scene as an Orbix or I can also right click on any node or any group of nodes. And in this case, I'm just gonna take this saddle, right click, save. So let's bring in the saddle to Blender. You might be able to select the cube, go to Data Properties, come down to Orbix Properties, and then enter the file path here. But it's not working for me right now, so I'm gonna show you another way. If I go into the material, I can just delete the universal material. Shift A, search for Octane Proxy. Now before we click this, let's give this material a name. We're gonna call this saddle. 
And before we click on this, we need to come over to the object data properties, select the material, and then select the proxy node, or else it's not gonna work. So now, if we select open proxy node, and we're in this octane node graph here, I can right click and I can add something here. So let's go to import, saddle, and now you can press space to search, search for geo out, so geometry out, connect this pin to this pin, and now when we close this, we have a geometry out, you see this? So now we can plug geometry into geometry, and we have our saddle. You can also do this with a full scene, so let's see that now. I'm going to go into the proxy graph. I'm going to drag in this USD file. And this is going to take a while for it to load because this is an entire scene. Okay, now the USD is loaded. Each one of these is a material slot and we have two output pins. This one's camera and this one's geometry. So let's go ahead and drag this geometry into here. And now let's see what happens when we close it. Okay, and now you can see this has brought in this geometry just fine. It's brought in all the materials and the shaders and everything. If I zoom in here, that's, that's a nice uh, bloom effect we have there, nice glare. If I come in here, we can see we have some objects here. I would need to relight this whole thing, but you can see that it brought in this wood texture and everything. And it's important to know that I can't edit any of these meshes individually right now. I would have to go into the node graph and do some things there. But hopefully you can now get a sense of how to bring things into and out of Blender for Octane and Octane Standalone. Okay, that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.